Leon Spin in the third. How are you, brother? I'm doing well, Leonard. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, we're going to talk ATV MX round 10, Loretta Lynn's. Um, a lot of amazing things happen. Championships mm -hmm. were decided. Uh, some were decided early, but right. you know, we're going we're gonna to go over the gist of it. Um, we can start with our normal, but other than other than this, let's go back to how was the turnout and the weather looked incredible. It was, this is the only Loretta Lynn's ATV motocross race I've ever been to where the weather was not terrible. It's always either hot, super hot and humid and or it's just downpouring. And hot. And hot, yeah. So this weekend, I mean, we got very lucky. It was, you know, mid, low to mid 80s all weekend. And I mean, honestly, I was, I was driving around the pits. I think it was Friday night with Tim, Tim Detling from TDR Motorsports. And we were just talking. It's like, this is the only Loretta Lynn's that we have ever been to where it was chilly at night. Wow. Yeah. Cause it's wow. oh, like, yeah, it's always hot and it's always humid. I don't Not think the I case this last weekend. I've never been to Loretta's when it was chilly. Chilly yeah. was never in the cars. Yeah. yeah. Like you're, you're driving around. It's like, Ooh, I can almost go for a sweatshirt right now. Oh gosh. I, for, I didn't bring one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow that's so that's crazy uh yeah. that's kind of that's kind of the gist i got out of everything mm -hmm. that i saw that the weather was so good and yeah uh, you know i've never seen a loretta's like that maybe no. the ATV gods were looking down on everybody going you know history's going to be made today let's just make it nice yeah yeah i mean they definitely did something because not what we were used to that is for sure well that's that's great that it worked out for everybody yeah i know i'm I'm that too <laughs> um you know i don't want to i don't want to jump into this too soon um are, are you guys at 4130 motorsports who had an incredible year mm -hmm. um, you know not to you know promote the guy that's my uh, you know on-site reporter too much mm -hmm. uh, you guys had an incredible year uh mm -hmm. you won a championship you were runner up in another and mm -hmm. we'll get into that during the, the show. Yeah. But um, we touched on possible pro deal. Has there been any more talk of that? Or is it something that we're going to have to wait till next year? Um, it's it's still talks right now. I mean, obviously, when when we make up our minds, you'll definitely know. But it's it's still a talk right now. Okay. Still trying to figure it out. Well, JJ had an amazing year. And Jaden yeah. Launderville, excuse me, he's not the little kid JJ anymore. He is Jaden Launderville, the pro am or pro sport champion and pro am mm -hmm. runner up. But we'll yeah. get more into that later on. You know, the 450A class that we started talking about because mm -hmm. of Kim Osborne, uh, Damian Hubert, that guy ran away with it, uh, clinched his title mm -hmm. a weekend before or two weekends before at uh, Briarcliff. Um, mm -hmm. The second place guy um, was uh, uh, Cody. Mm -hmm. um, he's not even in, he didn't even race. He didn't even race. Um, that that Loretta? Yeah, he didn't even race that class and still um, picking in points. He's, I'm sure they figured he had second locked up and he, he also locked up the production A championship at Briarcliff. Um, so he actually bumped up and ran Pro Sport Pro Am at Loretta's. Excellent. So we'll get to talk mm -hmm. about him a little mm -hmm. bit more. Uh, mm -hmm. Braden Orr was third on the day and third for the year in that okay. class. Um, yeah. We're going to we're going to give a shout out to uh, Kinsey, who ended up sixth for the year in the class, um, which you know she did really good. Uh, mm -hmm. you know what i think that i got that wrong um on the points 
Um, because I can't read this. For some reason, it came up in a different print. And I, uh, Casey uh, Fancher, mm -hmm. didn't he do better? I am not too sure on that one. Now, also today, if you're looking at stuff yesterday versus today, um, I noticed that points were updated because they they actually contributed, you know, they calculated everything with the throwouts now. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go back and figure that out. Yeah, and... if you're looking yesterday versus today, it's gonna be different. Yeah, well, them guys had to do that to me because I wrote a bunch of stuff yesterday, so it's gonna be wrong now, and I'm gonna have to go <laughs> back and redo it. Right, right. Um, but they had uh, Launderville in second in um, uh, pro am by one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, is it does it did it does a points margin open up? No, it was one point. Well, you know that may have also changed today as well. I was looking at that last night. Well, we're gonna was... have to go back and do a little homework, but yeah, uh, yeah. The, we had a great race in uh, anyways in that class. I apologize to everybody for sounding so off, but now that now that uh, we're talking about it, um, mm -hmm. it's a different format. They changed everything. Yeah. And well, and this is it's you know if you're looking for yourself or maybe a couple riders, you know you can sit down and do all the math and figure it all out. You know that's what we did at Briarcliff for JJ to know that he won Pro Sport at Briarcliff is. We sat down, we looked at all the finishes, we threw out the two worst, look at, at Joy Norris's, you know, and kind of figured the same thing and realized that, you know, if JJ didn't even race at Loretta's, Joey Norris couldn't catch him. You know, so it's it's literally taking and, and knowing the points breakdown for what position and adding all of it up, throwing, you know, two bad ones out, Unless, like right. I said, unless you're doing that for yourself or maybe a couple of people, you're not going to sit down and do that for every single class. Correct. I don't have that that time, and I know you don't have that time either. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, the results the results are offline right at the moment. So okay. accurate, exact numbers. Um, it doesn't look like you're going to get it um, because it's offline. So, I'm guessing that somebody found a mistake or something, and so they're going back through and redoing it. I'm sure that there was something like that that happened. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, because they have Briarcliff, but they do not have Loretta Lynn's. Interesting. So, huh. But you know what? We can still talk quite a bit about things because we do have some of the results and some of the finishes in my noodle. Mm -hmm. um, you will look at... Uh, WMX, you know, Kinsey Osborne. I got an update from her mechanic father, fan, you know, just all around great dude that takes good care of her. Mm -hmm. um, 49 moto or is it 49? 45 moto wins consecutively. That's two complete undefeated seasons. Insane. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I did not realize that I was off. I thought that she had been defeated in 2023, which she had not been. Yeah, no. And I didn't catch it. So I apologize to Kinsey for that. But yeah, this is this is an ongoing thing with her. Um, mm -hmm. She did really well in the 450A. Man, mm -hmm. what a what a thing to look forward to in 2025. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and hopefully she can. You know, she does start school here soon. So we'll see if that affects anything at all. But yeah, I mean, next year may be a whole nother season of domination for her. Well, we'll get to talk to her in September. And um, I know that that's a little ways away, but we'll <laughs> we'll get her on, on in September and go over it, you know, get really in depth with how she's feeling emotionally. I know mm -hmm. that I talked to her a little earlier this year. And she had her schooling covered. She yeah. knows she was she was dialed in. Uh, because school's gonna start uh if it hasn't already for her. Um the just 
random facts that I know from from talking and scheduling things. She goes to start school on the twenty second. Yeah, so or she leaves her school on the twenty second. Well, it's close to home. Yeah. So she can drive. She doesn't even have to. She. I don't know if she's. I don't know if she's moving closer, but it's not that far away because it's a community college, I believe. Oh, yeah. So she shouldn't have to. Yeah. Hopefully, she can stay put. But yeah. Starting her two year out there, close to home. There you go. It out. So. Yeah. And you know what? She's starting off good because she can almost create a a motorsports business. You know, promoting herself. Uh, you know, she's learning how to talk on the camera better. Mm-hmm. You know, get with Anna, Adam McGill. He'll get you on a program that will get you talking in front of the camera and, and make it good. Just ask Chloe Harper. She's <laughs> uh, she's a joy to talk to and, you know, knows how to manipulate the camera well. So uh, Adam's done real good with her. Yeah. Uh, you know, not a whole lot more to say. Um, Natalie Jackson. I believe was second and Olivia Joyner was third for the year. I believe that's right. Yep. With Shelby Cobra, because I can't pronounce her last name coming in fourth, one point behind. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Crazy. Was, yeah. I got to talk to Shelby last night and, okay. um, you know, she'll be on the show in a couple of weeks, uh, okay. but really great kid you know, with a full-time job, you know, aspirational for women to, to see that another dad, you know, being the mechanic, taking care of her. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. good deal there. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, know, and I think uh, it, it's going to be very interesting to see what this WMX class does in the future. I mean, you've got You've got Natalie that had a pretty inconsistent year in WMX herself, you know, with some rookie mistakes, I would call it. She's 16. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, so we'll see. Hopefully she can iron out, kind of figure out her race craft a little bit better and hopefully stay on the bike a little more next year. And... I believe, I don't know if it'd be next year or if it's going to be in two years, but there's going to be another female rider moving up that that could possibly be a force to be reckoned with as well, and that's going to be Lillian Plaza. Okay, nice. Uh, you, you know, so let me throw this out there to you, and and I don't want to create a controversy with it, but mm-hmm. it's a professional class, and beings that the other professional class and the and the pro am class is going, you know, factory based. Mm-hmm. Why should the WMX not be factory based? Um, that's a very good question. It's a question that that I I believe it should be a production class. You know, for the exact reasons that you said, the WMX class is the pro women's class. So why shouldn't it adhere to the same rules that our pro class follows? Production rules. You know, no more hybrids, which, mm, I mean, I know Natalie's on a production Yamaha, but I think most of the quads in that class are TRX-based hybrids, to be honest with you. I think they are, too. Uh, mm-hmm. I know Shelby, Shelby rides one. Um, I don't know what Olivia rides off the top of my head. Hers is the TRX chassis. I'm just not exactly sure what engine's in it. Kinsey's is a hybrid. Yep. Um, you know, I know... Um, yeah, I think most of those bikes are TRX based hybrids, but yeah, I, I believe that that should be a production rule class. Yeah. I, I just was throwing it out there because mm-hmm. I was thinking it two years ago, if it's professional, why isn't it going right. to the same rules? Uh, right. It's just like, okay, if it's a pro class, why doesn't it not go, you know, the pro class, then the women's pro class, you know, like when you're looking up the results, mm-hmm. why do I have to scroll all the way down to the bottom before I get to WMX? Right. If it's going to be pro, let's put pro, pro, then pro am and, and run it that way. Right. Uh, uh, you know, not trying to create controversy. I'm just saying, hey, right. if you're no, going to. No, I think you class, have a very good point. It, it should be. And, you know, I also 
people can can love it, people could hate it. I think that that class should also be longer than five laps, being again the fact that it is a pro women's class. Yeah, run it, run it like the pro sport. Mm -hmm. Right, or, or at pro least am. pro sport, if not pro am. Pro am, I think pro am. You know, mm -hmm. I think pro am times would be perfectly fine. Yes, the ladies would dedicate more time to it. I, I, you know, mm -hmm. it might affect. It might affect Kinsey racing in another class, but you know that's just that's just tough. Right, you, know, you have to focus on your bread and butter, and your bread and butter, and that's the WMX. Right, right, and I mean honestly, if she gets to the point where she feels like she's ready to move up, it wouldn't be in the way if she ran WMX on Saturday and Pro Am on Sunday. Right, and she'd have to be on the production bike anyways because mm -hmm. it's all five; it's all production. Correct. Correct. You know, let's just get into that really quick. If you don't mind, do you think that, that in 2025, you're going to see a smaller pro-am class because of the production rule? Um, I don't, don't really think so. And the reason I say that is I do know, you know, there's a few people that were really belly aching about the production rule for next year. And now that we're towards the end of the season, I see those bikes going up for sale because they're trying to go into production bikes. Um, and Pro Sport Pro-Am, even last year, as people were trying the Yamahas, there were less and less TRXs and hybrids, especially on those gates. Yeah, I bet, I think there's only a small handful of bikes left that are hybrids in the pro sport pro-am class and and it's you know with like Lindquist and a couple others they've proven that the production bike can win and beat the aftermarket hybrid right right and not to i mean it's kind of different to to compare it this way but when team usa goes overseas and we compete against you know the three best people from each participating country in europe three production bikes spank the hybrids over there every year yes they do and mm -hmm. and didn't didn't the one year that we took a hybrid over there it have a transmission issue um yeah there was an issue and joel said he didn't like it anyways he said it handled like crap well you know there you go Mm -hmm. getting, back, getting back on a production machine see what happens right you know i know here on the west coast bo baron who's an 11 time champ he went to a um, hybrid and you've seen him bouncing back and forth between the hybrid and the and the production honda mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he, you know he, he was having a little trouble dialing it in getting mm -hmm. it to react exactly the way he wanted it to right exactly exactly you know, if you're going to do a hybrid, do it right and, and have a chassis that was built for that engine. Right. You right. know, there, and that's exactly what Joel is saying is, you know, obviously the TRX chassis was built for a TRX engine. You stuff a CRF engine in there. It's going to change things around because you have to put that engine in, in a different position in the chassis. And that chassis wasn't set up for that. Right. Totally, totally get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll we'll see how these rules break down. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I don't know you with with the pro am class again. Going back to that, I know, I know two possible people moving up in the from the pro pro am class to pro, but I don't really know of anyone else. And and not to to talk bad about anyone else, but I don't know of any other riders that would be ready to move up to pro from pro am. Um, who's ready? Who's moving up now? Well, obviously we're we're in in talks about JJ, and I've also heard that that Norris is also talking about possibly moving up next year. And those are by far your two fastest um amateur riders uh, mm -hmm. I, I i could give you the argument you know i could give you a decent argument in keeping them down and mm -hmm. um uh, you know there again i don't want to cause controversy 
or get into a, a, a camp, you know, argument thing. But mm -hmm. Jaden, let's just use him first before we mm -hmm. get into Joey. Last year, his year was so bad that he was on the verge of not coming back. This year, he had a great year. So if he rolls into his first pro season and just takes a beating, which is mm -hmm. going to happen, he's not going to come out there and be a front runner. He's going to be a mid packer or farther mm -hmm. back. You know, it's just the transition to pro is just that way. He's going to mm -hmm. get his body in shape. He's got to learn that these guys are going to push you. They're going to bang you. You know, if you're in the way, they're going to get you out of the way. Mm -hmm. you know, there's just so many growth things. And why not let the kid, because he's 19, let him have another year of development down mm -hmm. there and solidify his speed and his training so that he's even more prepared to go into the pro class. Um, maybe that he can go win the pro-am you know, thing and take it away from a Mason Jackson mm -hmm. and prove that, hey, this pro came down and raced it and I beat him. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm ready to go to pro because mm -hmm. this guy's number five for the year. So that means that I'm going to go in and run somewhere between five and seven, five and eight because of the longer motos, you mm -hmm. know, the, the higher speed rate, you, you know, just the, the, all the things that when you advance, mm -hmm. that's just my take on it. I, I so have, where I would, where I would come back on that is <clears throat> Obviously, I'm I'm behind the scenes on that whole program, so I know what happened last year and and what went on for the bad finishes and the the lack of confidence. Um, but if he were to stay down, that means he'd have to run pro sport pro am again, and he proved his point in pro sport. There's no point, and then there's no point of showing up just to run pro am on Sunday. But you could build on that with that pro sport. I mean, you can build. You, there's so many things that you can build and develop yourself, even fine tuning suspension, fine tuning, mm -hmm. you know, conditioning and 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 going out and sprint racing those deals and using them for development. I'm just I'm just saying mm -hmm. because of age. Right. Like, right. Well, he's he's gonna be 20, 20 and a month as yeah, well. Still young. Right. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's the big thing is there's, there's no point of staying down and running pro sport again. And I don't know how it works with that class, but you know, with Mason Jackson, he cannot run pro-am again in 2025 in the pro-am class, you can win it and you have the chance to defend it, but that's it. So he can't keep running pro-am over and over and over again. You know, it's kind of a, you, you win it, you get a chance to defend it, and then you got to get out. So Kevin, can Kevin Sarr keep coming out and racing? Kevin can because he did not win. You know, he hasn't won either, either year. And then in the pro class, they've changed that rule so many times and who knows, they may change it again, but the current rules from a pro to move down to pro-am is the only way you're ineligible currently is if you are have have been a previous cha pro champion that's the only way you're ineligible so as it is right now bryce ford could come down and run pro am so only two current riders in our pro class that could not come down to pro am would be chad weenan and joel hetrick okay Mm -hmm. uh, you make a good argument. I just, you know, I just think that a little bit of growth is not a bad thing, you mm -hmm. know, just throwing it out there. Same with Joey. Mm -hmm. I think that a little bit of growth for him, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he gets healthy in the off season, gets mm -hmm. himself taken care of. I don't know what his status is. Um, um but he got hurt again at Loretta's. He, he, Jump to jump that actually, you know, we talked about this, which was quadding into the sand section and he had a bad landing, jacked up his wrist and he did not race pro sport or pro am at Loretta's because of it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Bummer, bummer, mm -hmm. bummer for Joey. I, I think that uh, he's a pretty talented guy. And, he is. Uh, you yeah, know. he's he's a rider that just needs to put his head down. He needs to put his head into it 
and he could go far in the sport. Well, maybe maybe we'll see those two guys battling it out. In, we'll in the see. Next we'll year. see. Um, you know, we we touched on pro sport. Everybody knows uh, that Jaden went out there and cleaned house and mm -hmm. won, you know both motos. Um, Zachary, I can never pronounce the young man's last name. That uh, has been it. Yeah, he came out and rode really well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when when the first time that that guy came out, uh, we, you mentioned what a quality rider he was, and he beat mm -hmm. Jaden. And mm -hmm. you know, you said that was to be expected because of his skill set. Now mm -hmm. you see a total different Jaden. Mm -hmm. you know he's going to be right, right. Yeah, I mean that just. That just goes to show, and that's with any rider. I mean, you take some time off, and, and I'm not going to lie, Jaden has spent a little bit of time down in Florida with Jeffrey. I mean, in between, oh, it was, I forget what round it was now, but, oh, it was after Echikani. Jaden went down to Florida, did some training in between rounds with Jeffrey, and then again after Briarcliff, he went down to Florida Road and stayed with Jeffrey and and before Briarcliff, Jeffrey was at Briarcliff and Jaden was too, and they were doing some riding around Ohio together. So I mean, it just goes to show you that if you are if you're training with the right people, and and Jeffrey has been around. I mean, he's been a pro rider since 2012, and he's had a lot of very good finishes. So he knows what it takes to do well in ATV racing. And if you got something like that behind you and pushing you, you know, obviously it showed with Jaden here in the second half of the season, he did pretty damn well. And I can tell you right now, he's, he's at a, a an extreme high. I mean, I think most riders can agree with this that by the time the season's done, you're just, you're ready for a break. You know, it's you're ready to just step away for a month and live life for a little while and then come back and hopefully enjoy it again. But right now, you know, I rode with Jaden after Loretta's and for um, we had a seven hour car ride together and he was stoked and telling me how much he wanted to ride tomorrow and, you know, all this stuff. He's ready to just continue going. And I've. I've never seen that before. So it's it's good to to have the right people behind you doing the right training to keep everything fun and exciting. So how was well, we can get into that at a later <laughs> date. Yeah. But, uh, um your your pro sport guys, um I believe Norris was second for the year and yep. um, didn't he Hannah uh, roll in for third? I was thinking that Cody Houghton finished third in points. That is very well possible. Yeah, and that's the big thing with the end of the year. And it takes a couple days for this stuff to update. I mean, they had, those guys had some great races. I know there was a problem in the pro am uh, setup because the, the they changed up the deal. Mason Jackson won it, and uh, Heath Hanna was second. Uh, so he had a good run, and finally, the last race of the season, he gets a a, a great race and, yeah. and second, um, and then Cody got third. Yeah, so it mixed it up a little bit, right? But yeah, and it was. I mean, Sunday was just second moto was was chaos. A lot of bad stuff happened, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, you had. Um, you know, Mason, Mason won it. Kevin Saar had a bad start and he was only able to salvage up to fifth at the end of the first moto. JJ getting second, the second moto or in the first moto. And then in the second, second moto, I mean, Mason was, he, Mason pulled both hole shots. You know, let's start with that. So he set himself up perfectly to finish very well in both motos. Um, JJ had two very bad starts, um, in the first moto he started, what was it? He started like eighth or ninth and just, it was able to move his way up in the first couple corners, luckily, but 
you know, in the second moto, Kevin and JJ were were battling for second for a little while. And coming into the Ten Commandments, Kevin came in just a little little sideways, and the bike caught, ended up throwing him over the bars, and from what I saw, it looked like it rolled on top of him. I mean, it took him a while to get up, and I I think he only finished that lap and then pulled off. Um, luck he's okay you know he's he's actually flying home back to Estonia right now um, but he's he's okay not hurt too bad but it must have been enough for him at the time to decide I'm not gonna finish this moto and then <laughs> Jaden's bike started smoking it went a couple more laps until it decided it had enough <laughs> so Ka-poo. yeah unfortunately have you diagnosed that yet? I have not yet. Um, that's going to be one that I'll be taking that engine to Baldwin so we can get into it and figure out what happened. So right. not sure if it was a cracked piston or what happened. Either way, it was a, it was a pr- part that prematurely failed even with, I mean, I do top ends in those bikes very often. So that, that piston would have had an hour and a half on it tops if it cracked yeah so uh did it well it doesn't matter it doesn't matter um so we talked about kinsey osborne and her historical uh mm-hmm. events with, with two undefeated seasons and 45 yep. moto wins um her, her three titles so let's just roll into the pro class we're not going to uh sugarcoat it anymore for everybody Joel Hetrick uh, has done something that no other rider in the history of the sport has done in mm-hmm. professional ATVs. He went undefeated in ATV MX. Um, yep. That's off to Joel Hetrick and his team, Team Phoenix. Man, what an accomplishment. Yeah. You've been in the AT- ATV industry a while, Leon, and you've mm-hmm. seen a lot of cool things. But we never have seen this. Never seen this. Never have seen this. Yeah, and it's Joel, Joel, I know he is, but he better be proud of himself because that is that is a feat. And we know, I mean, we've had these conversations. This is the 10th time that we are doing this. And we've had two names pretty much all season that have that we've talked about that have not let him take it easy. You know, he's had to work for these moto wins. It's not like another sport that is missing two wheels where everyone that was fast was hurt. So one guy got to take it. You know, we had one fast guy that was hurt and an army of other guys that were fighting to be up there. Right. So, you know, we can get into that final moto. Mm hmm. You know, I don't know if you saw the video or you might even have been standing. That there. was the first moto. That was the first moto. Yeah, that was, that was the first, first moto. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No, I got to see that. What kind of lunacy was going on in that with those two guys? I think, you know, it was it was obviously a failed, a failed move of overtaking in the corner. You know, the door wasn't open and and Obviously, you know, and I think everybody, almost everybody's seen this by now. So we now know Brandon Hogue and Bryce Ford. You know, Bryce was trying to make a move on Brandon in a corner. The door was not open, and he tried to open it. Um, ended up, I mean, not sugarcoating it, he T-boned Brandon, essentially. And I don't know if it was just a lot of tension, you know, emotions were high. But instead of stopping, pulling the bikes apart, two riders get going quickly, um, it ended up being the demolition derby at the county fair. You know, Bryce shoved that bike in there and just kept on shoving it in there. That's what I saw. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't get it. Yeah, it, no, I mean in it, it, dump on the clutch wasn't gonna get you free right right you know and i don't know in what world that was going to work 
But in this world that we are living in, it definitely did not help or work or do anything except completely jam two bikes together. Yeah, and until they started working together. Right, right. They weren't getting apart. Right. And, you know, and I don't know if how many people saw it. I didn't see the video because I watched it. Um, but Joel Hetrick got caught in that for a second as well. Well, yeah, so... The, the 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 lead train mm -hmm. so it this is what it looked like to me from my vantage point when i saw the video it looked like brandon got a little sideways maybe mm -hmm. lost traction and then bryce was right there and and caught him right you know, catching right. him by hitting him and right. then when it stopped brandon it stopped bryce and then right. the part that am amazed me was joel ran into bryce Right. He had room to either divert or go inside to do something, right. uh, in my opinion. But there again, I'm not the guy there. I'm not. Right, you know, right. And it could have just been that, that Joel already had his race line committed, yep. you know, and, and he ran into it. Luckily, Joel was able to pull out and, and get going again. But it stalled him long enough for Max Lindquist to get around him for a little bit did he did max stay out in front of him for more than a lap and no no, no. joel working really made him past him yeah yeah and at that point joel was then on a war path because he had he had spent how long you know diddly doing behind those two and you know joel likes to get out front right away you know he will he will wait for his moments but i think once that happens he threw off the gloves and was ready just to get out in front and, and finish that moto. Well, Max put on a great moto holding on the whole time. Yeah. Wesley Wolf, you know, these are two guys that I think that nobody's counting on being that fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and they're, they're coming, you yeah. know, Hogan yep. and Ford better look out because Wolf and Lindquist are getting it together and with the right things happening in their camp, they could easily take that number two, number three spot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't know. I know Max is Max will be around as long as he possibly can. And he's I think he's got more motivation now than he ever has before. But Wesley Wolf, if you're for some reason watching this, I better see you on the gate for at least two more seasons. Uh, if he can get the backing, you could see, you could see him, you know, I've only got to see him ride a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, think that young man is very talented. Oh, absolutely. He is. And you could see that guy with his work ethic and, you know, you meet people with demeanor and you mm -hmm. look at Joel, when you talk to Joel, he's got the demeanor, he's relaxed, he's you know, he's confident. He's, he's got an air about him that you just know he's got skills. Right. And he knows he's got skills. 100%. I think Wesley has that same aura. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. You know, mm -hmm. Max is developing that aura. I don't think, I don't think he's 100% grasped it yet. Um, mm -hmm. I think he's still a little bit in awe that, you know, I'm, Right. I'm, I'm banging bars with the fastest guys in the world. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing with Wesley too is, and, and I, I've never asked him this, but you know, the big thing was with Wesley and we we're questioning if we would really see him last year is his arm is all jacked up. You know, he's got a, a rod in his arm and essentially, I mean, he's got a, um, fake a replacement elbow in his arm and it never really fully took so he goes out there and does a moto and his arm is bothering him the entire time and when you know that and then see the results that he's having that's even more impressive tells you what a tough guy he is you mm -hmm. know i didn't want to take away from max when i was talking to max i really mm -hmm think that max has a lot of what it takes to put himself at the front of the pack mm -hmm. you could you could see max as a, as a champion and there again i'm not saying that brandon hogue can't do it and i'm not saying that bryce ford can't do it right you know 
look at look at the distance that Bryce has covered to get where he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? and Brandon's the same way, and Brandon gets to train with Joel. Right, right. So, well, and that's just it with Max, and, and not saying that he couldn't do what he's doing without the the help that he has, but the one thing that's really accelerating Max and his you know, skill level increasing each year is that he is close with Chad Weenan and trains with him and Chad helps him with bike prep and, and, and setting up his program. So you've got somebody that is very, very smart in, and has turned racing into his business and right. now that person is helping you out and making helping you become successful as well. Exactly. And I think that's that's a feather in Max's cap, you know. Mm -hmm. And what you know, Wesley's carrying the load on himself with some of his people, and but he's a but he's a hard worker. And right. Bryce has got a, a, a Mark Baldwin, an amazing camp where they're carrying the load for him and working with him mm -hmm. right he's just growing by training and riding brandon's got some good people helping him too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely brandon can't seem to catch a break though yeah i mean brandon it's just and hopefully he can spend this off season i know i know his not so much his program but his personal life is changing this off season uh, so hopefully that helps him out and and gets him. I mean, because I don't think many people know this, but in the off season, this last off season, Brandon didn't spend hardly any seat any time on the seat of a quad because he was always having issues with something or he didn't have time. It was just all sorts of things. So for him to finish as well as he did for hardly any on the bike training during the winter time that shows a lot for his fitness and nutrition programs, but it'll re be very interesting to see how he does. If he can spend an entire off season riding. You know, I, I don't know this and I probably should who builds Brandon's bikes. I believe Johnny Hale builds and maintains the, the race bikes. Okay. Brandon's practice program from in the past anyways has kind of been on him. Okay. I understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the pro class has got some cool things coming. You know, if we get the new rookies coming in and, mm -hmm. you know, you know, Bryce and Brandon and Wesley and Max and Nick Janusa and Rastrelli and, you know, Mason, they're only going to get faster. Right, right. And you can't cut the old man out. You know, there's been some, Chad's been very quiet, which only tells me that he's, he's doing things. Um, he hadn't gotten on the bike uh, when uh, I had spoken to him at Briarcliff, but he mm -hmm. did say on microphone, uh, on tape, that he was planning on racing 2025. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, he's not going to be slow. No, no. And I, I've said this before, you know, look the last time that he got a major injury like this. He wasn't winning championships before he got injured. You know, but he was younger, a lot younger. He was, he was, but he is now smarter. He now has a lot more experience. He knows what it takes to, to get a championship. He's had all year to figure out what is going to take me to the next level. And it may not happen because, you know, like you just said, he is older, but we've also talked about this many times that it seems like ATV riders age like fine wine. Right. We, we, we get, get better. We, we get smarter. We become better riders when we're older. But he's 38 in motocross. Right. Not 38 in off-road racing. Right. Um, I think that's a difference. Uh, do I hope that he comes out and challenges 
Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing against Joel, nothing against Chad, nothing against any of them. I want the fastest guy to do what he does. Um, I also want to see some good racing though, too. Right, right. And and hopefully, I mean, I don't think it's really going to affect Chad much, but hopefully he just realizes that, you know, even if you're a smart rider like he is, things can happen. You know, it's not like he was a, a rookie and, and made a rookie mistake at Daytona. Shit happened. And unfortunately, he got injured. Right. You yeah. know. You know, before we get off and, and lose track, we have not even touched on a couple of things for Joel. Mm -hmm. uh, he did surpass Chad in wins. Yep. So he's the meanest motocross uh, racer ever in the ATV world. And he won his fifth title. He clinched mm -hmm. that prior cliff. Um, hats off to Team Phoenix and Joel Hetrick. These guys uh, are doing an extremely amazing job with him. And uh, I hope they keep it up. Now we have Team USA uh, mm -hmm. going, and that race is going to happen in September, if I'm not mistaken. I believe you are correct this year, yep. Yeah, it's a little earlier than the October. Yes, um, yes. And that's kind of a big thing that, you know, go back to what happened at Loretta's is uh, Brandon and Bryce need to realize that here coming up, they need to work together. So this little rivalry thing that's going on needs to get put on the shelf. Uh, I, you know what? I believe that the powers that be that run that will, will make that happen. Knowing who those people are, I'm sure it will. Yeah, because they're not going to tolerate it. No. There's too much money being spent. And right. they're representing your country, not, you know, riding in in the states you know just at a national this is a this is mm -hmm. a world stage and right. i do think it uh it'll be a, a great show i'm expecting i'm expecting a one two three again out of them uh mm -hmm. you know bryce last year rode really really well mm -hmm. i think if bryce and joel can keep brandon in check because of the nerves which mm -hmm. i think joel will, will play a large part in that mm -hmm. uh, then brandon will go out there and do fine and do well yeah absolutely absolutely and and you know the big thing with that too is like i don't know if it's going to affect anyone but they're going to see previous competitors on that gate you know kevin Sar being one of them I don't know if uh, we tech will be at the quad cross the nations race this year or not, but he was last year representing Poland. So, you know, all those other guys, like, I don't know who you are. You don't bother me at all, but knowing some of those riders, does that change the way you think? I don't know. The two time British champ, Harry Walker will be there. He's mm -hmm. done to get faster. So, mm -hmm. you know, he could come in and be a little bit of a mix. He ran mm -hmm. He ran in the top for a short time last year, but mm -hmm. let's see what he can do, you know, this year. Right. right. You know? Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. No, it would, it will be, it will be. So Leon, are we going to have you back next year in, in, in 2025? You will have, I mean, it's still my, still my job. So I'll still be at the races. I'll still be there talking to you. That's awesome. I appreciate it. It's been an amazing year. I've really enjoyed yep. working with you. And thank you so much for your insights. Um, yeah. I, we don't always agree on our topics and, and how we're going to lay it out, which is great. Um, I think it, it makes for a better show, Leonard. It does. It really does. We see it from yeah. two totally different sides. Right. Right. And um, I think it's great. Right. If we had two spineless jellyfish on here, we wouldn't get anywhere. Right on. You know, <laughs> when am I, when am I, am I supposed to grow a spine? Is that what's supposed I to mean, happen? I, you might want to work on that this off season. Okay, I'll 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 get I'll get into the gym and see what I can do. <laughs> However, I'm I'm looking forward to you know. Obviously, I think uh, I think we'll we will most likely have some big things coming next year, and and hopefully people want to keep listening to us ramble on. They did. We get a lot of views on our reports, and uh, 
yeah, the comment sections. Uh, yes. Also, there's people reaching out to you, reaching out to me, and they're right. enjoying what we're putting out. So yeah. again, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, we we might as well just tell everybody there's going to be a special show with Leon and I on the normal podcast platform. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So we'll be looking for that. That's probably going to happen in September as well. Right, right. Think Freaky Friday, but ATV talk. There you go. There you go. <laughs>